Hello and welcome back to NV Fine Art Studio. I am Nina and today I want to show you how to turn your primaries into a full range palette. I am also testing a new paper today. It is Fabriano Artisticum. I have never used it before and I heard so many good things about it, so I'm very curious to test it. The reason why I decided to do this video is because actually three reasons. First of all, I received a question from my patron who used mostly primary colors. How to mix them to get the colors on my palette? If you're struggling with this, with mixing primary colors, I really hope this video will help. But before we even start, the hot tip, don't try to memorize mixes, apply logic. And I will share in my video the logic I apply when I'm mixing colors. The second reason. I'm moving my creative tier to primary colors only. I'm making my videos for creative tier, keeping in mind that it should be beginner friendly. And I believe reducing the amount of tubes we have will definitely help with focusing on the guts of painting, tonal values and temperature. Because, for example, if you have just cobalt blue, it is easier to understand. You add more cobalt blue to the mix, it gets darker. You add more water to the mix, it gets lighter. But if you start mixing cobalt turquoise, cobalt blue, violet, and suddenly you add more pigment, but the mix gets lighter, your head just goes spinning. What did I do wrong? I add more color why it's lighter than before. Or you may not even notice it got lighter, and you may just assume I add more color, it's supposed to be more saturated with pigment, so it's darker. But when you start painting, it, the painting will just look off. Anyway, less tubes means more consistency in your mixtures. And the third reason, I want to talk about the benefits of mixing your own colors. And if you know me and seen my demos before, you're absolutely right if you're expecting here the talk about color harmony. Color harmony is not just a fancy word, it is something that holds, unifies and balances your painting. Something that creates a particular mood and feeling in your painting. Without further ado, let's start. This is the paper I will be using today, Artistico Fabriana, and this is a seven sheets uh, test pack. And I picked uh, extra wide 300 GSM rough surface, and I believe they are all 100% cotton. First, let's go through my choices. So first is Neutral Tin by Winsay Newton, it's fully opaque. Next is Chinese White by Winsay Newton. It's a semi-opaque uh, pigment, that's why I picked this particular um, tube. My two reds are Cadmium Red Light by Holbein and Permanent Alizarin Crimson. Cadmium Red Light is a fully opaque and the Alizarin Crimson is a fully transparent color. If you want to choose just one, I would probably suggest having a Lizarine Crimson. Next, my two blues, Cobalt Blue by Daniel Smith and French Ultramarine by Daniel Smith. Uh, Cobalt Blue is semi-transparent and French Ultramarine is fully transparent. If I were to choose one, I would probably go with French Ultramarine. I don't really want to go into details at this point, but we will discuss it later. My yellow is Cadmium Yellow Deep by Holbein. It is a fully opaque color. First, I'm going to spray the paint in my palette to wake them up because we will be using a little bit of every color to match it with primaries. And now I'm going to squeeze a little bit of each color into my palette. Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Red Light, Alizarin Crimson, Cobalt Blue, then French Ultramarine. And then we have neutral tint and then a little bit of a white. I'm going to start with cerulean blue. Cerulean is a very important color in my palette and usually I use it for painting skies, for painting sea, for mixing greens and things like that. Just in case, if you're wondering why I skip the top right corner of the palette, there are some different blacks on the far right. We haven't um, talked about them, but we are using neutral tint to cover this. Then there is ultramarine blue and cobalt blue, and these are our primaries, so we already have them. 
I also want to add, some may argue that my choice is not true primary colors. It doesn't matter. As long as you have yellow, blue and red and you can achieve your desired tonal values and temperature range, it is all good. The next color in my palette is Cobalt Turquoise. It is very similar to Cerulean, so we're just going to ignore it. Then Lemon Yellow and Indian Yellow, and not sure what that color is. I hardly ever use this, so I'm ignoring them as well and jumping straight to my most used color, Yellow Ochre. This is a warm neutral yellow. I use it a lot on its own. For things like sky, sunlit facades or buildings, roads, grass and in mixes making greens or warm grays and things like that. Next is our raw sienna. I don't use it anymore. It is a more neutral version of yellow ochre and can be very easily achieved by adding neutral tint to yellow ochre. Next one is burnt sienna. Same purpose but for darker tones. Yellow ochre is a naturally a light pigment but burnt sienna can go into the territory of rich darks. Next we have our two primaries, Cadmium Red Light and Alizarin Crimson. Next one is Lavender, one of my favorite colors. It is very similar to Cobalt Blue but a little bit warmer and fully opaque. Next one is Buff Titania by Daniel Smith. It is an off-white semi-opaque color. Then we have neutral tint that we already added to the primaries and the final two are violets. Carbazol Violet and Mineral Violet. They're actually quite recent additions to my palette. And I mostly use them for shadows. Okay, let's mix some primaries. The first is Cobalt Turquoise. Cobalt Turquoise is a cool blue color and to achieve cool blue we need to mix it with a yellow. So I'm starting with lots of Cobalt Blue and just a touch of yellow. It looks just about right, so let's put this on paper next to Cerulean. And in the bottom left corner we have same mix but on Archer's paper. Now let's try to achieve yellow ochre with our primaries. Yellow ochre is a warm neutral yellow, so base for it is yellow. Adding a little bit of cadmium red light to make it warm and neutral tint to make it neutral. Please note, neutral tint is a warm neutral and if you add something like paints gray instead of neutral tint, you will turn the yellow into green. Burnt Sienna is a warm orange, so the base for it is cadmium red light with a touch of yellow to make it orange and neutral tint to make it neutral. Looks about right on the palette, let's add it to paper. And remember, if something doesn't look right on paper, you can always adjust it. For example, if it doesn't look neutral enough, you can add a little bit more neutral tint straight to the paper or to the palette and then to the paper. Next target is my favorite lavender. The base for it is cobalt blue with a touch of alizarin crimson because this is a warmer tone and warmer blue and a pair of Chinese white because lavender is opaque color. When you apply the mixture to the paper, don't judge it straight away. Move your brush a little bit around and leave, leave it to absorb because sometimes it changes because different pigments react with paper differently. Some absorb deeper into the paper and some stay on the surface. So it may change the value and it may change the temperature. Now let's try to achieve violets and this is one of the main reasons we have alizarin crimson and ultramarine in our range. If you want to achieve warm violet, you use more red and less blue. And I'm going to use ultramarine and alizarin crimson together. I'm trying to match mineral violet here and in comparison to carbazol violet, it's warmer. Warmer means redder. And if you want to achieve a cool violet, you use more ultramarine and less alizarin crimson. The beauty of mixing your own violets is that they are really vibrant, they granulate and they glow. Now Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith. It looks like it's of white color, a little bit warm and it's quite neutral. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow into the mixture. And this is a semi-opaque color, so we need white, Chinese white. 
and also a touch of blue and I would probably add a bit of neutral tint to it as well to make it neutral so let's test this yep looks quite right a few more brush strokes around and here we are the color just appeared Another common color of white color that I usually use is Jean Brillian number no. 1 and for this I need the white straight from the tube and I usually mix it burn with burnt sienna but we don't have burnt sienna and this is a similar mixture to burnt sienna, a mix of red, yellow and neutral tint and I mixed it with Chinese white and here we are, this is the off-white color. Now the violets had time to dry and please note how flat the colors from the tube look and how vibrant, rich and deep the mixed colors are. This is one of the reasons to mix your own violets. These two violets were made from alizarin and ultramarine. Now let me show you what you can get if you mix cadmium red light and cobalt blue. Cadmium red light is almost orange, so basically we're mixing cobalt blue with orange and this is what we get. This is a, a really really warm grey I'd say and if you add more blue to it you will get a proper grey. It definitely looks violetish because we're still using red not the proper orange but nothing like what you get from Alizarin Crimson and Ultramarine. The last mixture that I want to try is greens. Usually I use cerulean or cobalt turquoise with yellow ochre. So this is how it looks. So let's substitute it with cobalt, blue and yellow. If you just use yellow and cobalt blue, it looks like your secondary color, but mixture of cobalt turquoise and yellow oak is not a secondary color. So to achieve the secondary color, we also need to add a bit of red and neutral tint. And this is because yellow ochre consists of yellow, red and neutral tint. So here we are, all our mixes and glands here. I think we did a pretty good job matching them. If you want to work on them a little bit further, I've just done my first primary colors only demonstration for Creative Tier on Patreon. So please find me there. The link will be in the description below. At the beginning, if you remember, I said if I were to choose one, I said I would prefer Lizard and Crimson and now I want to show you why. Because um, it's really easy to achieve cadmium red light from a Lizard and Crimson uh, by adding a little bit of yellow. So here we are, this is a mix of a Lizard and Crimson and yellow. And now I'm gonna get cadmium red light straight from the tube pretty much and make another mark so here we are they match pretty good on the other hand if you try to make a cool version of cadmium red light and add a little bit of blue to cadmium red light remember what we did you actually get gray you're not you're not getting elizabeth crimson from cadmium red light by adding blue and now actually if I add cobalt blue into that mixture, Lizard Crimson with yellow and try to make the gray that we achieved with um, uh, Cadmium Red Light and blue. So I am adding blue to a mix of Lizard Crimson and yellow and now I'm gonna make marks so it matches pretty well. Uh, now let's add more blue and try to create that gray. So this is a mix of Lizard Crimson, yellow and cobalt blue. And I'm gonna make another mark here that matches pretty well again. So if you were to choose between Alizarin Crimson and Cadmium Red Light, I would definitely recommend getting Alizarin Crimson. Now, my opinion about um, Fabriana paper. This is what you get from the pack. There are different colors of paper, natural white and extra white, and there are different textures such as rough, um, cold press, soft press and hot press and I worked on rough and extra wide and that matched 
um, arches paper pretty well. So if you have a look, it looks quite similar. Personally, I think Fabriano paper is much more vibrant. For some reason, the colors look more saturated. And also it felt like they, they stay on the surface of the paper better rather than going deep into the paper. For example, if we compare the blues and the yellows, you see how they actually more vibrant. They don't look as gray on the arches paper. For some reason, they look grayer. Maybe this is due to the fact that the colors stay on the paper more, or maybe the brown paper is actually an extra white paper, and Arches it doesn't say that it's extra white, it's just white. But visually, at the first glance, the whiteness of the paper is actually pretty similar. Another thing that impressed me is the texture of the paper. So when you mix colors such as greens, um, the colors that granulate, they look brilliant on the paper. So in the, in the arches, it looks, um, it looks, it doesn't look as interesting uh, in comparison to Fabriano, for example. Now I want to quickly test a gradient wash and how this paper receives the water. So I'm going to turn this paper upside down. It was, um, it was written that this paper um, can be painted on both sides. So that's what we're going to do. So this is a typical gradient wash and I'm changing the colors. Now I'm spraying it a little bit to test how it receives the water. And first impression that it um, the water stays on the surface of the paper for longer. It just stays there instead, instead of getting absorbed. So now I'm, I'm tasting the dry brush. Dry brush is perfect. There are no issues there. And now I'm trying to paint wet on wet. So I'm adding a thicker mixture into the wet. And now I really want to test how, uh, how paint spreads on the paper spraying the water again and it feels again like it stays on the surface and it also it feels like it doesn't spread as much so the paint stays in one spot more rather than spreading around i'm not saying it's bad or good i'm just saying it's different to arches or baohong and this is completely expected every paper is different and now I'm going to test the lifting. So I'm going to grab my synthetic brush and try to leave that darker paint. There are no issues there, very soft and gentle. It doesn't damage the paper at all. And now I'm a little bit more rough with it. I'm pushing my brush really hard against the surface of the paper and doing it a couple of times. No issues whatsoever. Now let's dry this and compare to Arches washes. So I have a little wash over here and as you can see it's really blurry, it's beautiful. But on Fabriana it kind of stays where I put it. So there is no soft spread and I almost can see the lines. I painted it with the brush. But the texture of the paper and granulation is absolutely beautiful. Hope this was informative and enjoyable. Please remember all the examples I showed today are from my Patreon demos. So if you need more practice or just want to paint along, please find me there. The link will be in the description below. This is all for today. Until my next video. Bye.